Hi, Mark Donovan here, and today I'm going to go over the types of GPS approaches. There's quite a few different types of GPS approaches, and the acronyms for them can be quite confusing. So we're going to go over uh, those different types of approaches and explain the differences between a decision altitude and a minimum descent altitude. And we'll talk a little bit about the sensitivity associated with GPS approaches. So follow along. Okay, types of GPS approaches explained. So we've got several types of GPS approaches to discuss. The three most commonly used GPS approaches would be the LNAV approach, uh, the LPV approach, and a circling approach um, associated with some other GPS approach, like an LNAV and an LPV. There are three other GPS approach types um, that we need to also be aware of because they're always out there as well, but just not maybe as much. We got the LNAV plus V for vertical guidance, we have an LNAV slash VNAV approach, and we have an LP approach. So we're going to go a little bit deeper in every one of those here in the subsequent slides. But it's important to remember that GPS approaches are not considered as precision approaches. Um, they are, uh, some of them have precision approach performance almost, but not quite there. The LPV and the LNAV VNAV approaches have decision altitudes similar to an ILS approach, um, but they're still not considered um, by the FAA um, to be actual precision approaches. Before we go into those individual approaches, we want to talk about the GPS approach sensitivity. Um, with a localizer, um, an ILS approach localizer, the sensitivity increases as you get closer to the runway. GPS kind of has to approximate that. So the general um, design of a GPS approach is that when you're beyond 30 nautical miles out, and if you're flying um, the center line on a course to a runway, um, the, the width of the sensitivity is two nautical miles either side of the center line of that inbound course. Once you get within 30 nautical miles, that sensitivity um, increases to one nautical mile either side of the center line. And then when you get to within about the final approach fix, the sensitivity increases to about 0.3 nautical miles, or actually 3.3 nautical miles either side of the center line. And so your LNAV and your LNAV, VNAV type approaches have this type of sensitivity. Uh, but notice the runway there, that the sensitivity is not increasing as you get there. It's staying 0.3 nautical miles away. away. And that is one of the reasons why it's, the LNAV's approaches are not considered precision. If we look at the next figure here, we see that we've got um, this kind of tapering toward the runway in terms of sensitivity. So again, beyond 30 nautical miles, it's two nautical miles either side of center line sensitivity. Uh, within 30 nautical miles, it, in sense sensitivity goes or increases to one nautical mile either side of center line. And then at the approach fix or near there, it goes from 0.3 nautical miles either side of the center line and continues to shrink down on sensitivity all the way down to 350 feet either side of the center line at the runway threshold. So these are for your like your LPVs and LP approaches and are very similar to the ILS uh, approaches. So let's go deeper now into all these different types of approaches. We have the LNAV approach. Uh, LNAV stands for lateral navigation. It has an MDA or minimum descent altitude associated with it. And this is the minimal altitude that you can descend to. If we're uh, going further, you have to see the runway environment. Um, it's your most, G G most basic GPS approach. It provides lateral guidance only. And again, the sensitivity of the course decreases to 0.3 nautical miles near the final approach fixed to the runway. It doesn't, again, provide any type of vertical guidance. It's akin to like a localizer or VOR approach and is thus called a non-precision approach and why it has an MDA associated with it. Next, we have the LPV approach. Uh, this is a localizer performance with vertical guidance. As you can see here in the red box, the LPV has a decision altitude associated with it that's um, lower than the LNAV uh, that we just went through with the MDA. It's the, LNAV, the LPV here is 978 feet versus the LNAV M has an MDA of 1,380 feet. Why? Because we have vertical guidance here with an LPV approach. Um, and it also has more sensitivity as we fly closer and closer to the runway, like flying on a localizer. Again, the course is only 350 feet wide on either side of the course center line when we are, when we are at the runway threshold when flying an LPV. 
Also, the vertical guidance provided by the GPS is accurate enough to follow a glide path down to a lower decision altitude. As you can see here in red, the red box, the LPV goes down to 978 feet. With a circling approach, um, circling approaches can be, occur with most of these uh, GPS type approaches, um, based pr again primarily on another GPS approach like an LPV or LNAV, and it involves maneuvering in the traffic pattern to a runway that the approach didn't line you up for, for landing, while always maintaining visual contact with the airport's runway environment. So as a result, circling approaches have higher minimums associated with them than the LNAV or LPV approaches. Next, we have the LNAV plus V approach. The LNAV plus V approach is a lateral navigation approach with advisory vertical guidance. It's not considered an FAA or Jeppesen approved GPS approach. Um, if an airport doesn't have an LPV approach, you may be able to reference a glide path on your avionics, your GPS avionics, as you fly that LNAV approach in. The GPS units um, have to have WAS enabled feature or be equipped with WAS enabled, um, and they're, they're what simulate a glide path for advisory purposes only. Uh, but since an LNAV approach doesn't offer LPV minimums, you can't fly the LNAV to a uh, decision altitude of your choice. You must fly it down to the LNAV um, MDA that's on the um, instrument or approach procedure. If you look here, uh, we have an LNAV MDA of 1420. That's as low as we can fly it, even though this particular RNAV 26 approach um, with a was enabled GPS, we'll give you that vertical guidance, but for, um, again, advisory purposes only. I also should just mention when we mentioned WAS enabled, uh, WAS um, uh, allows for more precision in the GPS information that's being provided uh, to the pilot and the aircraft, and it involves looking at the GPS satellites, um, getting some error correction information, um, up basically down toward ground-based systems, and then those ground-based systems sending back up to the GPS receivers some error uh, code information, and the GPS receivers in the aircraft being able to take those error codes and utilize them to give you more precision on your GPS system. So not all GPS units have WAS-enabled features. Next, we have LNAV, VNAV approaches. Uh, they stand for lateral and vertical navigation. The vertical guidance comes external from the GPS unit in the aircraft. And this is known as a barrow-assisted approach. It comes from, um, from the required use of a sensitive barometric altimeter uh, for determining vertical position and altitude. It can be flown like a precision approach by following a glide path down to a decision altitude. Not a lot of small GA aircraft, especially training aircraft, are equipped with barometric altimeters, and thus LNAV and VNAV approaches are not often used or available in those types of aircraft. Next, we have the LP approach. This is a localizer performance only approach. There's no vertical guidance. It's like a localizer approach, uh, but and it has an MDA associated with it, minimum descent altitude. Uh, the GPS avionics, again, has to be WAS enabled to fly this type of approach. So those are all the different types of GPS approaches. Hopefully you found this video helpful. Again, if you did, consider hitting the like button and subscribing to the channel so you get notified on my next video.